see, this is something you can transfer to your kids. What am I going to be doing for the next three hours of my life? Okay, so I'll ask you a simple question. What are you going to be doing for the next three hours of your life? You're going to be sitting in a conference room listening to a lecture. This can determine what type of meal you can eat for its digestibility. Meaning, if I were to give you a biryani right now, right? At around 1 o'clock, after eating the biryani right now, what would happen to you? So who's after me and who, who's, who's the speaker after me has to be very cautious. Alright? Okay, so we ensure that none of them get biryani right now. Okay? So the tennis player, the tennis, the tennis player would be coming in for a training session. A simple question is, Sharmada, what did you eat? Sir, for lunch I had uh, this, 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 this. So lunch was at 2 o'clock and she's come in for training at 4 o'clock. She needs to know if she ate that lunch at 2 o'clock, will it digest fast enough for her to not feel sluggish on cold? Rule 4, which I'm finding very difficult to implement in India, because uh, I, think, I think it was Mr. Balu at his first session, who was talking about how to plan for the tournament cycle. Right? So you have an on season and you have an off season. A nutritionist requires this help. You need to decide as a coach, right, my kid is going to be going for these tournaments, so this is the on season. Mr. Ryan, please plan the diet for on season cycle this way. And off season, I want to focus on muscle growth, I want to reduce the fat in the athlete. That can be done in terms of what we call in nutrition periods of negative and positive. Negative where we lose the fat. Because in India, if you take the in-body analyze on a lot of tennis players, 25 plus percent of fat in the body. Okay? So if 25 percent plus fat is there in the body, imagine an athlete carrying a bucket of water. Fat is dead mass. Imagine two athletes, one with a bucket of water and one with a bucket without any water in it. Which athlete is faster across the court? So fat is dead mass. So in off-season periods, a nutritionist can help a coach trim down the diet with maybe protein or certain uh, non-fatty foods to help the athlete get to a better, uh, what do you call that, muscle percentage level. So one key test you can do on all your players is, you can invest in a small in-body analyzer machine, a machine which measures the fat percentage. It costs about five or 10,000 rupees. It's a wing scale with a hydration meter and a fat percentage meter. Once a week, you yourself, your support staff can check each kid. So you know if they're coming back from Diwali, have they really overdone it at Diwali time? Rule 5, supplement. Most nutritionists that you will meet in India say, no, you don't require supplements, you can do it naturally. I think with the cultural implication of the diet, okay, uh, and the child also going to school and also playing tennis, doing all of this and trying to eat structurally becomes difficult. So a supplement in Greek means in addition to the food. Okay, so what we need to do is, you need to give the right type of supplement to the kid, which one which is legal, one which is for their age group, and third and most importantly, give a supplement based on nutritional recommendation by an expert. Don't go to Dr. Google and because ex athlete is taking the, you know, an amino acid in this sport, it's also good for tennis, it's not good. You have my email ID at the end of the session, please call me, ask me, I will be most happy to just take four or five things and I will talk to you what are the four or five things and then tell you, yeah, for this athlete, you maybe could give a casein protein or an egg protein or an whey protein, it depends. Or maybe this kid needs more amount of carbohydrates. Now how do I, how do, I do it and how you as a coach can do it, this is important because it will get you to the next stage of nutrition planning. One, you need to know the height of your tennis player, you need to know the weight of the tennis player, you need to know the fat of the tennis player. Okay, and once you do this, we determine resting energy expenditure. Meaning, meaning, if you are sitting down, if you are sitting down, how much energy is your body consuming? Okay, so I call it the engine idling speed. So what is your engine idling speed? So you may have a different engine idling speed, you may have a different engine idling speed, but that determines how much calories you require if you are sitting down. Then, how many hours of play? 1 hour, 2 hours, 6 hours, 10 hours, are you doing weight training or are you doing on foot <coughs> training? Are you doing swimming? Are you doing walking? Are you doing jogging? How many calories are burned per hour? Add that to your idling speed. 